In the last video, I showed you how to make your own PCB ruler just like this one. But I made a mistake in the final steps, which meant that these holes were not drilled. Same with these ones here, in these connectors. This is not a big deal for this part, but in the future I'd like to avoid this where it might be more important. So today I'm going to show you my top 7 KiCad plugins to automate the process and improve your editing and make sure that this issue never happens again. And make sure you stick around to the very end because I've got one more bonus tip just to make your editing life even easier. My name is Luke and this is Terminal Curiosity. Installing plugins for KiCad is pretty straightforward. Once you're at the main overview window, you want to click Plugin and Content Manager. This will open up the Plugin Manager. And from here, I'm going to find and install my first plugin. So I'm looking for Gerber to Order. Click Install, and then click Apply Changes, and that will install. And now if we take a look at the PCB file, I can click Tools, External Plugins, Gerber to Order, and then Export. And there we go, it's just exported all the different zip files for a variety of different board houses. In this case, I use JLC PCB, but if you use any of these others, you'll also have the files. We'll take a look at that. And here's the project folder. If we look in Gerber to order, here's all the files just generated now. We could double check this by going to JLC PCB and uploading a Gerber file. And let's take a closer look at the board now. Now here we can see JLC PCB shows us the board as they intend to make it. And this time it has all the holes included as per the design. The next plugin I want to show you is called Board to PDF. This one right here, we'll install that. And this should let us create easy assembly drawings of our files with a simple click of a button. So if we go to the PCB document, now we can go Tools, Plugins, Board to PDF. And we'll get this menu. This shows us the settings that we can set up for the PDF. In this case, I think I'd like to use colored top and bottom layers instead of black and white. So I'll remove these. And there's other colors that we can work with here. I'll click Perform. And there we go, it's created our file, which I can open. And here we have a nice neat assembly drawing for the top and bottom side of the board. Note that in this case, this image is upside down, but that's because of my design, not because of this plugin. This sort of document is useful for sending to someone else so they can see the mechanical layout of the board and the basic assembly drawing. Next, we're going to check out this plugin called Place Footprints. This gives new options for how to place grid or circle shape footprint arrays. Let's say I'm designing something that needs a stack of components, let's say 10 extra resistors, all in a nice neat line. If I put 10 random resistors and import them through to the board, that's these new parts here. But let's say I want them in a nice straight line. Let's grab one, go external plugins, place footprints, and now place by reference number. In this case, it's listed the extras automatically, but you can go through and select which ones that you think are necessary. I actually only want from uh, nine onwards. You can choose linear, matrix, or circular. Let's say I want them to be 10 millimeters apart and zero in the Y direction. There we go. It's automatically just lined them up with 10 millimeters of distance, just the way I specified. Now let's say we want this in a matrix shape instead. We'll go, we will do the same thing. External plugin, place footprints. Matrix. And maybe I want four millimeters by four millimeters. There you go. This is really handy for aligning a lot of parts all in one go without having to worry about whether they're exactly the same spacing away from each other. The plugin does it all for you. As it turns out, you can also use this rotation and grid feature in the footprint editor, but this is actually a standard feature in KiCad without needing any plugins. I discovered this after posting the last video where I went through and made this Nixie tube footprint individually by calculating the coordinates of each pad using an Excel document. 
This took up a lot of time, and turns out there's a much quicker way. If you simply paste one pad, put it in the position you want. For example, I want x0, y negative 4. You can then click on that, right click, create array, keep the radius 4, and I want 13 pads, then I press OK. And there's my circle, done in seconds. And similarly, you can create an array. So once again, create from selection, create array. This time we'll go to the array tab, and there's lots of different settings you can play with here. If I just press OK, there you go. There's your array of footprints. This might be useful for a ball grid array type component, for example, if you had to create the footprint yourself. Sometimes when you're laying out a circuit board, you might find that you have components laid out something like this that you need to connect together. So you draw the traces, and they automatically apply some 45 degree angles. And this is fine. This works in most cases, but sometimes it might be nicer if they were smooth and round. It might look nicer, and it might be better for higher voltage applications. This is where my fourth plugin suggestion, Round Tracks, comes in handy. So now we highlight the tracks we want to use. External plugins, Round Tracks, and I'll go with radius of 2 millimeters. And there we go. This can look nicer, depending on your design. And since it doesn't have the sharp corners, it's slightly better for high voltage applications, where you're less likely to get a buildup of charge on the corners. In this case, for such a small design, that's a pretty minor effect, but once you scale up to larger voltages or larger traces, that can become a bigger factor. Number five on my list of plug-in recommendations is PCB Coil Generator. This is a fairly niche plugin which lets you easily create coils on your circuit board. This is useful for things like if you're creating a planar transformer or motor coils. Here's the menu it gives you. You can select all sorts of settings here for how you'd like your coil to be generated. And once you're done, you press Generate Coil, and here it is. In this case, I've created a two-layer coil, and you can just simply connect to these with a regular trace like you would any other part. The next plugin is called Interactive HTML Bomb, and this one's one of my favorites. This gives you the option to create an HTML bill of materials, which is interactive. Here's the main menu that lets you change how you'd like your bomb to be laid out. Once you're done, you click Generate, and this opens up in a separate window, an interactive bill of materials just like this. This lets you see all your components laid out in a list, as well as the front and back PCB layouts. The thing I love about this is it makes it very clear and easy to see what you're working on and all the components you need. You can also change this to dark mode if you like. Ah, that's better. This gives you a lot of different settings to play with, so I'd recommend checking this one out, spending some time, and using it to support your own project development. If you want to include graphics or QR codes on your PCBs, then this next plugin is for you. This one's called Transform It, and it's useful for transforming and reshaping objects on the PCB. So here we see I have my Terminal Curiosity logo, and also a QR code to the last video. But let's say I wanted this to be a bit bigger or a bit smaller. In this case, we can click on that, go to the Transform It menu, and just simply change it. Maybe I want it to be twice as large, mirrored, rotated by 43, no, let's make it silly, 63 degrees. There you go, perfect. And same thing with the QR code. We can easily make this bigger or smaller and rotate it if we want to. Just be aware that if you make a QR code too small, the manufacturer might get mad at you, and it might not print properly in the silk screen, so you might not be able to scan it. This plugin also works on components, but just be careful. It will change the size of the component without changing the size of the pads. For example, if I make this chip twice as big, all of the pads have stayed the same size, but now they're further apart. This can be useful if you want to place your components at a weird angle for some reason. Like, if I want to set this chip at 37 degrees, that would still work electrically, although it will make your trace routing quite difficult. But, say you want rotation, that's, this is the perfect tool for it. Now if you've stuck around to this part of the video, I'm going to show you one more tip that makes your editing much nicer. This time we're going to color themes, 
and this has a collection of different color themes that you can apply to KiCad. I'm going to install dark mode on mine. Now to make sure this actually applies to the your schematic editor, you'll need to go preferences, preferences, and under schematic editor colors, we'll change the theme to the dark mode that you've just installed. Ah, that's much better. Just a pro tip also, you might want to go file, print, and click on use a different color theme for printing, KiCad Classic or KiCad Default. This just ensures that if ever you're going to print out your schematic, it will not use dark mode and paint the entirety of your page black. So that's my top seven KiCad extensions and plugins to make life easy. If this video was useful to you, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you want to see more useful tips in the future and project builds. Cheers.